Okay, uh, hello everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Jimmy Shaw. Uh, I work, work with McAfee on a team of other mobile researchers and uh, I'm going to be talking about for-profit mobile malware. If any of you caught uh, Georgia Weedman's talk early in the morning, uh, about 9 o'clock, uh, I will basically be giving the examples of what, what can go wrong and what people have actually done already and showing how, yes, even with a relatively secure app you, or phone or OS, you can still get hit. And what, they're, what, they, what people are doing to make money doing that. That's actually my focus. Uh, start off first with like a couple of trends. Uh, right now we're looking at uh, the total amount of malware that we've seen so far, mobile malware, over the last four or five years. Um, the big chunk over there is Symbian, the big blue one. And the last quarter, Symbian has dropped off because basically Symbian is now um, out of service or what to term exactly. Oh, it's not really important. Uh, Android is the, uh, is the uh, second biggest slide or the biggest chunk and it, it, pretty much outclassing you know, job, mobile Java, Java 2 ME. Um, in last quarter actually, uh, in the second quarter of 2011 we actually saw a bunch of more, uh, we saw other platforms like Java malware, we saw a few Symbian malware. Uh, and Android had t taken over in quarter two, and now in quarter th uh, this quarter, the third quarter, it's basically been 100% uh, Android, nothing else. No, no new malware from any other platform, which is a really good trend showing that basically the bad guys are saying, okay, we made money doing it on other platforms, let's try it at the largest, widest expanse, the less protected uh, frontier. Uh, let's take a look at a couple of the uh, historical malware real quick, just to give you an idea what the, they range from, most of these malware, they range from like simple ones to complex ones. Let's start with the, uh, one of the first simple ones. This is a uh, Westburp. It was a very simple uh, premium SMS sending Trojan. It didn't have a GUI, it didn't have anything to, to signify it was running. And it basically had these couple of files, a couple of image files inside that you, you could find if you took it apart and said, okay, what's inside this? Nothing special, just send a bunch of SMS. It was like one of the first ones we ever saw. Came out four or five years ago. Um, something more complex, which actually came out before Westbrook, was uh, Red Browser. Red Browser was, this is actually uh, really funny. I, was, I thought this was really, really old and had no, no impact uh, to any of us nowadays. I mean, just four or five years. Uh, basically, Red Browser pretended to be a, um, an app that lets you browse the web via SMS. Like f up till the release of Smozzy, I think about a couple of weeks ago on Android, there were no apps that allowed you to browse, uh, no legitimate apps that allowed you to browse uh, websites via SMS or text messages or, or your, your text messaging plan. Uh, Smozzy does it by using the uh, author's uh, server to basically, uh, you text to him, he uh, proxying, uses his server as a proxy to download those sites and then packages them up I think as uh, image files and sends you an MMS back to your phone and then you can, the Smozzy client on the app will then take it apart and decode the file and pull out the website right there, which is kind of nice. Nice trick, uh, but totally not, not, not what this thing did. This thing just basically sent out premium rate SMS messages. It's a really good attempt at fooling the user and telling them, hey, we got something that's good for you that'll uh, get you, save you money and whatnot if you have unlimited texting. Didn't do it, just cost you money. Uh, this image basically is a, uh, the cycle of how, we, how it works when, whenever uh, uh, malware authors go after a new platform. They, okay, you, you have the, the R&D stage, followed by a, uh, a reuse stage, and then, then followed by a profit stage. R&D is basically like uh, any of your, your uh, malware zine writers, uh, like, uh, uh, like, like 29A, like, like a bunch of other magazines, and that people are writing malware and coming out with that. New platforms, they come up with things and they, they start over again. So like we have Windows Phone 7 coming out now. We don't have the tutorials out yet, so we're still in that stage for something like that. For something like Android, where people are already leveraging their skills with Java, it's going past that, they're, already, they're in the next stage. They're at the point where we're just saying, okay, how do we make money with, with, the, uh, with mobile malware? And that's what the rest of the talks about, basically. How are people making money using things on the platform now? We're not really talking about what, what can they do yet, uh, or at all. Uh, geographically, where, where are we actually seeing the malware coming out? We have an, it's sort of a nice world here. Uh, we're not really seeing much coming out of uh, North or South America. Uh, we suspect that might be because if you can make so much money by selling um, uh, iPhone apps, say iFart, or a dozen other applications, for a bucket piece of a whole bunch of people, you're making a good amount of money. Uh, so we're not seeing a lot of people putting in an effort into making malicious malware in, 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 in the um, in the Americas. Uh, then we uh, look at uh, Europe and uh, I guess Australia. Uh, 
we haven't seen too much in, in Europe as such, or Western Europe anyway, uh, uh, for m mobile malware of any sort, even though it's actually a large proportion of, uh, we had uh, Symbian users and, and the other smartphone users in Europe lo for a longer time than we have in America. Um, and Australia, Australia is interesting because of uh, the IKEY worm, the IKEY recrawling worm. The one with that I had was the, it attacked jailbroken phones and l logged in via SSH to your phone and then replaced your background image with the picture of Rick Astley. That, that was a very nice thing, but it was only for jailbroken phones, not for everybody's uh, standard uh, stock iPhone. So we can take them out of the picture. What we have left, we have basically uh, much of Asia and basically areas that speak to Russian, areas that speak to uh, Chinese. Uh, in the Russian areas, we have about, it's like a two to one basically, where, where in the Chinese speaking areas, we have about twice as much malware on multiple platforms, Symbian, Java, Android. In Russia, it's mainly just Java and Android. What's really strange is that it's really, really simple malware coming out of, out of, out of the Russian speaking areas and more heavily complex malware coming out of the uh, Chinese speaking areas. And then the funny part with the uh, Russian speaking areas is because we, they have all you got your, your, your crimeware and your, your, your banking uh, trojans and things that are very complex on the PC side. On, on the mobile side, we don't see any of that at all. Apparently, it, it's simple. It, if they can do it with a really simple SMS trojan, they'll do it. They don't, they don't really care. They, they don't have to waste the energy to, to, to fight against their competitors. Unlike the Chinese speaking areas where it's on more doggy dog and you got to keep your your opponents off of your, 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 your devices. You've got a million devices, you want to hold on to those. Um, next stage, how do, they, how do they actually profit? Uh, a couple different ways. Um, if you're going to be putting out uh, malware, it's sometimes easier to like, just outsource the distribution. So you can hire like a bunch of different people to say, OK, spread it on a bunch of platform, uh, sorry, forums and, and shareware sites. And well, I guess there aren't any shareware sites anymore. Freeware sites and uh, basically just software markets. So you basically give you give your app over your your malware over to somebody else, have them distribute for you, instead of having. What I'm saying is that there's a a marketplace for it. You can now go to other people to have it distributed for you. Um, then there's another simple way people make money is uh, with premium rate SMS messages. Basically, these are your your uh, subscription services like okay uh, astrology or uh, weather or things like that, or ringtones even. Basically, something that's continually billing you and on a regular basis, and it's. Uh, useful for someone who's going to want a simple, simple attack. They'll just install, have you install something and then it'll send out SMS messages to their service. It signs you up or it gets you uh, one or two uh, expensive messages. Slightly more complex than, uh, on the stage is basically uh, is, is click fraud. Click fraud in uh, Black Hat SEO. Telling people, okay, you, you have apps now and we want to say, okay, how do I get traffic to my site? Do I do it with, uh, with, a, with a PC client or do I do it with, I don't know, uh, say a million uh, handheld uh, devices, and a million phones, well, all with their own IP address and all relatively unique people? Much better, uh, much more useful if you're trying to generate traffic. Also useful for click fraud where you want to take out your opponents uh, or waste their ad budget. Basically just have a bunch of fraudulent clicks from, once again, about a million, 100,000, 200,000, million users and you take out your, your, your competitors' ad budgets. You take over the market. Something a little more interesting, uh, stealing person identifiable information. Uh, you have your social security numbers, depending on where you are, uh, credit, credit card numbers, uh, pretty much anything that can be used to identify an individual. That's useful to somebody because they can then t take that and get credit cards and get other information, sign up for accounts, all the various uh, options you have when you have this kind of information. Um, the thing is now you can do it like you do with credit card numbers on, on, on the PC side where you, you steal thousands and hundreds of thousands of various uh, uh, credit card numbers and you package them up in bulk and then you send, resell them to a, uh, a larger distributor. It will then pay you uh, like a pennies on the dollar for or pennies each for each credit card number and in the, same way for, in the same way for any other account information. You'll get a small amount of money if you're just repackaging and sending it to somebody else. And this is useful on, on the mobile device because you now, uh, if you once again, if you saw uh, George's talk in the morning, there are so many apps now that collect so much information, like the Facebook app, which has access to your contacts and your other information, and putting a whole lot of information you wouldn't find on the PC anymore. It's so much easier. It's in one location. You have a tiny computer. That's where they where they go with that. Uh, this is uh, basically SMS phishing. This is another thing where I I'd actually talked to a couple of colleagues the other day, and they mentioned, okay. You, you, you can actually uh, do caller ID spoofing and pretend to be somebody else. We've seen malware that actually uh, will we'll take that to another step. They'll, they'll say, okay, we we'll, we'll spoof the SMS, okay, it's coming from my bank. It looks like it's coming from your bank. It kind of looks like, but that, that number doesn't look normal. I get messages from my bank all the time. That's not the number. 
you feel a little suspicious. You think, okay, this could be something else. It, with call ID spoofing, that can counter that. Another way of countering that is like a, this other malware that's coming up. It, uh, it, it injects the malware into your inbox, or sorry, the SMS into your inbox, so you can actually spoof the entire address, spoof the content, spoof everything you need to do in the message that looks 100% authentic. Looks like a duck, smells like a duck, probably from your bank. And uh, let's see, okay, this is once again stealing uh, stored value accounts. Uh, you can steal basically from uh, QQ accounts in China, which uh, have, you can hold amounts of money in your account and then you resell it to somebody else. Or a Skype account that has a uh, value in it, or, or basically any account that you store money in that isn't a, uh, a credit card account or a, what else are we stealing here? Or like a Facebook account, something that actually has an actual stored amount of money in it. And that's the, another target for malware authors. We have examples of some of these coming up. Um, Let's look at actually some detection and evasion methods. How do we, how do malware authors hide their, their, their uh, attempts from both the user and from an analyst? Um, there's some simple methods, uh, infecting other apps. Uh, this would be like uh, infecting or pretending to be other apps. The basic one is Trojan, the more complicated one is uh, in inserting your malicious code into another app. This is interesting because we haven't actually seen any, any apps that, that do it automatically, like, like an infecting virus where it'll inf you have your one, one virus infecting every clean app on your system. We haven't seen that yet. What we've seen with Droid Dream and a few other apps on the market is basically 50 or 60 apps that look like they've been modified manually. Because if it were automatic, you'd have millions of apps, not 50 or 60. Uh, so on, on Java and mobile, one on, on Symbian, they got chat clients, they got uh, adult entertainment clients, pretty, pretty much any, anything you want to pretend to be and that'll get someone to load and install on your system. That's kind of how it works. On, on Android, it's mostly games and other uh, popular games, like okay, uh, there's like Droid Dream. I think it was caught out initially, but it was in, Google found out of it because a, 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 a developer found out that somebody had pirated his app and was repackaging it and selling it on, on, on the Android market which turned out to be Droid Dream and it was infected and got caught by Google and then removed. But it, it takes a while to get actually in there. The best, um, what I'm trying to say is the, the best attempt for if you're a malware author is to basically take a legitimate app and put your code in there and, and then you've already solved half, the, half, the, half, you've, half of the problem. You've given them, given users a very valid reason to download it. Okay, it's Angry Birds from China and not, not, not Rovio. Okay. Uh, another type of thing we use to evade detection is, uh, or malware authors do, or to evade analysis, is encryption. The encryption doesn't really bother the user because you're not going to see it. If you're, if you're just installing the app, you're not going to see it. If you, ta if you regularly take a look at your app and tear, tear, them, uh, excuse me, tear them apart or analyze them or disassemble them or do anything to look at the app, you, you notice. You notice that they're doing things like, like something simple like uh, the one on top, which is basically a, a premium rate SMS Trojan that hides its, uh, the number of dials and the, uh, the message within a uh, what looks like a standard HTML file. I, actually, I think it's a PC standard uh, Microsoft uh, HTML file, I forget what it is. But it's basically hidden right in the, uh, the black area amongst all the color. Or just right in the middle of a, a regular file. So it's like, not designed to hide from anyone who's like, looking for it, but designed to hide from like the average user. You're not gonna look in and say, okay, what is this thing? It looks standard, I'm not gonna touch it. Or it looks complicated, I'm not gonna pay attention. Uh, another option is in modifying the configuration files. This doesn't stop the analyst again, but it's there to, to make it harder for people to see what's going on. And in some cases, it, uh, having a configuration file that's encrypted, allows you to uh, have a config, uh, excuse me, having a configuration file at all, gives you the option of changing uh, what number you're going to be sending it to. So if you, if you have some kind of server-side server, server side, uh, distribution point, you can just update that as, as you need to for a new new target. As, as they say, law enforcement closes down your, your SMS account, you open up another one and then update the configuration file. Um, simple ciphers, not too difficult, but there have been more, we've seen more complicated things or more complex things, but basically, uh, once again, Droid Dream, I believe. Was it? Oh, and Ganymede, and Droid Dream, and a bunch of other ones were basically using, I think it was DES initially, and then I think a few others use AES. Uh, both of which are symmetric ciphers, meaning you use the same key to encrypt and decrypt, and if you're doing that, it means it's within the file itself, meaning you're not really protecting it from analysts, or some, from, from anyone who's studying it to decide, okay, is this good or bad? What you're really doing is covering your traffic. Meaning if it's on a network, it's encrypted traffic, no one knows what's going on because they, don't, they can't see what's going on. That, that's amazing. That, that's helpful for both of evading uh, uh, network detection and also protecting your traffic and your botnet from your competitors, which is kind of where we see this a lot. Well, uh, like Enemy and a few of the others are basically based out of China and there's a lot of competition. And you have to worry more about people coming in and saying, okay, you're making a lot of money, let's take over your network instead of building our own. 
which is kind of what happened. Uh, happens occasionally. Um, a few other evasion techniques that are being used: uh, reducing security. Um, to, uh, security settings and whatnot on your system. Uh, we saw this initially with uh, Windows C uh, with InfoJack, which uh, used change the registry setting to allow silent installs on their phone, which was a number of years back. But it was a, it was a start. It was basically saying, okay, how do we make sure that we can drop our new updates and our additional payloads without worrying about uh, the users noticing it and stopping it and download or whatnot. Uh, then also root vulnerabilities, like on Android, uh, you rooted your phone. Okay. How do, how, what do we do now? Well, if, if, if the malware is rooting your phone, they have full access to your system. Pretty good deal. Uh, Droid, I believe, what was the one? There actually been, it started with Droid Dream, but now we've seen about three or four other versions of uh, malware that uses similar exploits that you've used by Droid Dream, just repackage, or once again encrypted to avoid detection, or avoid uh, antivirus and picking it up, in some cases. Um, just so they can root your phone and then take over. So once again, malware doing this. Uh, we haven't seen the same thing on, on iPhones yet. I mean, it, the concept is like if, if you saw Georgia's talk early in the morning, yes, you can, act, you can go after Android, you can go after iPhone because it's it much the same technique. Uh, jailbreaking you know, does a number of things. First, it like uh, unlocks the device, breaks you out of the jail, jail, jail uh, directories and gives you access to the entire file system. Then it also uh, patches out the, uh, the kernel so that it disables code signing so you can run any code you want, and I think it does a few other things, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, and so if you go to jailbreakme.com you know, with the write and write uh, firmware, it's, it's a one-click step, a drive-by download basically if it were, were something malicious, and it, it lets someone take over your phone. What actually, uh, the only time we've actually seen this in action, meaning we haven't seen it in a while at all, was uh, at TourCon last year, uh, Eric Monty uh, did, a, did a demo where uh, he took the jailbreakme.com 2.0 version, I believe, and uh, the exploit, which put out, and when you visit the site, it was a PDF, a malicious PDF, and it put out a couple of messages once, the, once it ran the exploit, the shell code, uh, and I popped up a couple of messages saying, okay, we're doing this now, and then this, and then that, it's telling you all the various steps that are happening during the jailbreak. Now, um, he, what he did, what Eric did, was he uh, took out those messages, took that all out, made it completely silent, so it was a silent drive-by download, and he added uh, code to do uh, key logging, or at least detection of uh, input from the, uh, in the keyboard or whatnot. Um, when he, uh, he ran it against, I believe, one of those, one of the, one of the very popular um, um, read, read, credit card reader devices you plug into an iPhone, and I'm not going to mention what, what, what the name of the, uh, in the service is, right? Uh, but um, essentially, he d he did that, and uh, he, he was able to read the, the, the digits on the device. So this is like a stock, uh, uh, what do you call, stock iPhone, same same OS that you get on this term, like. Uh, reflashing it with iTunes or whatnot, and uh, you get full access just by having you visit a website. So yes, you can do it on iPhone, yes, you can do it on Android, and yes, you can do it on pretty much any smart platform. Okay, I think uh, we mentioned earlier BlackBerry. Not really, because Blackberries are mostly Java phones with like very restricted access. I think there was only one attempt at, at doing the drive-by, which was a phone to own at Can Cansec West, I think, last year also. Uh, it was basically a WebKit exploit that they spent a lot of effort and time to actually develop and go after uh, BlackBerry devices, but generally not a, not a common exploit. Uh, let's look at some actual examples now. Um, Java. Java, J2ME mostly, these are simple, simple applications. So once again, mostly coming out of Russia. Not too difficult, not too, not too complicated. It's a very simple thing. It basically just SMS sending Trojans for the most part. This one's a little bit different, uh, or a little bit more complex of, of the simple ones. SMS free, it's had a number of different variants. Uh, some are, once again, like the chat programs or the adult entertainment programs, or pretty much anything that'll get you to install something popular and, and run it. And of course, it doesn't do what it says it does. What it does do for, the, on, uh, which is good for the, uh, the malware writer, is that it sends, it, it's customized for various countries. So like, if you were in, say, the, the Ukraine, you're not gonna be running a number for Russia in there. So you don't have to worry about, okay, it's not, it's just running, like even if you run the same, same malware in the US, you're not gonna get, get paid. Because we do don't have service for that short code, that, uh, short SMS code that you're sending to. So that's actually customized for various, um, countries. This is actually an improvement. This is like in later in the stage of uh, SMS, but still very, very simple. Something slightly more complicated, I guess. Um, VCon Pass. Uh, VContact is a, uh, a very popular uh, social network in Russia and Russian-speaking areas. It's like uh, Facebook, pretty much. And so this app pretends to be the, the mobile Java client for that, which is something someone would download, like Angry Birds, right? Same kind of thing, very popular. You type in your name, your, your, your username, your password, and boom, it sends an email right to the author. 
very simple, very quick. Gets him access to personally identifiable information and accounts, and you can leverage those to go basically, okay, you have all your contacts, all your friends, let me go send them the same message. Go download this and install on your phone, and then you're collecting a bunch of things. Pretty good for the author, not so good for the rest of us. Uh, let's look at some Symbian stuff. Symbian like, used to be one of the largest smartphone platforms, if you saw the original slide in the beginning. The big blue slide, it keeps getting smaller as Android takes over. Uh, but they were the largest, and I think uh, up to about two or three years ago, where they actually improved the operating system, so it was actually, they had more security controls and more uh, certificate signing, so that you actually had to do similar things like jailbreaking a Symbian phone to get more access. Um, Let's look at something simple from them. Uh, Rekloff A is a uh, Python script that does exactly what those Java things do. Sending uh, SMS messages, something very simple, very, very simple, and it just does the same thing. It puts up like a fake message, tells you it's something useful, tells you it's like a, a chat program, things like that. I mean, things you'd think you'd expect. I, mean, I think this goes with ICQ, ICQ, so I think it was out of Russia also. Um, so basically, Python on your Symbian phone lets you do something very simple, and it, it just show, goes to show you that if it's easy to do, somebody will do it. And uh, let's look at the actual more complex ones. Things are actually interesting on Symbian. Um, this is a little bit older, Kia Jia. Uh, it was in China. It was basically, it repackaged a bunch of older applications. So we, we call them multi droppers because they're just a bunch of repackaged malware in one installation package. And they're old, they exist, we all know what they are, and they just put them in a package and send them out again. The simplest thing you can do, except this guy was a little more creative. Instead of just repacking everything, he said, okay, how do I make some money? Why don't I put another program that, while I've installed all this other malware that disables your phone and makes it slow down and does a bunch of other nonsense, uh, why don't I put up a message saying, hey, why, uh, you want, if you want your phone to be fixed, uh, send me some money via QQ, the, the chat program, and, and, and I'll send you a fix for your thing. I don't think the guy ever actually sent the fix to anyone who paid up or whatnot. Not at all. So he wasn't, he wasn't even extorting you. He was just cheating you out of a bunch of money, a couple of coins. Which is, sucks, but I mean, that, that shows the innovation. Compared to the uh, Java SMS projects where they just send that SMS. That, that's actually kind of interesting. Uh, and you can actually cash out QQ currency, so it's not just a uh, online kind of thing. Um, this one is Super Fairy A and P. Why, why is Super Fairy interesting? It's it basically the one that, uh, out of the uh, Ways Awake Profit, is it's uh, basically an SEO app. Uh, they'll, in, on, a, on a Symbian phone, which you generally has like a, like a keypad, number keypad, and not really a keyboard, uh, you'd have to type in any URL with like the, the keyboard, which is great if you're very good at texting, uh, but kind of annoying if you're typing in URLs. Uh, so you, you change out the bookmarks and you put them towards your website or your forum or whatever site you want to drive traffic towards, and it's still gonna be like the first thing. People are gonna go, oh, well, that's a smartphone forum? Great, I'll go to that one instead of going to the one I know because I don't want to type in the dang long address. It's uh, kind of pointless. Um, yeah, and then and the, and there's also an attempt to download another app, and I, we didn't actually see it in the wild, so we didn't catch it in time to see whether what's going on. They took out the uh, other side. Uh, InSpirit A is the one I was referring to about the phishing via SMS. This is the one that inserts SMS into uh, into your, your inbox. It looks exact. They can format exactly how they want and, and put out the uh, all the addresses to say okay, or the phone numbers to say okay, yes, it's from your bank. Awesome. It's from my bank, and also it's a message that they're trying to do something interesting. It's phishing saying, okay, uh, your account has been hacked if you don't log in or whatnot, and within, I think it's five days or something, um, you're, you're going to disable your account or, or, or uh, block your account so you can't use your, your money. Sounds good. Phishing site. Directs you to a phishing site right away. Very sneaky. And a little more complicated. And then uh, once again, you'll see it's like a, it is a Trojan. It pretends to be an ex uh, system acceleration patch. Yeah, because everyone knows my smartphone's slow. Let me install some more software. That'll make it faster. That always works. Uh, let's, let's actually look at Android now. These are the bulk of pretty much all we have uh, that we've been seeing in the last few months. Um, these are simple ones first. Uh, basically, you start out with uh, SMS sending codes like Hippo. Uh, in Hippo SMS, it just sends out premium rate messages to, uh, uh, what do you call it, to sign you up for premium services. So, um, does do we need to delete them? Uh, yeah, okay, it also deletes the messages, like confirmation messages. So if you sign up to like a subscription account or service, it'll tell you, okay, your service will send you a message and then they will delete it. So if you delete it, you don't know you're signed up, you just keep getting billed. Very good for, for the uh, malware author, very bad for the rest of us. Um, something also very similar, uh, jsmsider.a. I, there are like a few, 50 or 60 of these, the various ones that are around are very, very similar. I tend to forget exactly what they do. Okay, um, this had a backdoor. This is a little bit more complicated. Um, steal system identifying information like your IMEI, which is like a serial number on your phone. Um, probably just so they can identify which various clients they've actually uh, infected and not anything special. There's no magic they can do with that necessarily and it has location. 
a nice thing it has the command and control server, which helps you basically uh, the uh, attacker to keep doing whatever they need to do, like either installing more software or con getting SMSs or a number of things. This is uh, intercepting SMS is very useful if you have like uh, banking with two-factor authentica authentication, like uh, an MTAN that's a mobile transaction authorization number, meaning you, you log into your website and your bank sends you an SMS. And then there are trojans like Zitmo that, that basically do the same thing, intercept and forward your SMS to the attacker. So they, when you log in, you get the message, that gets forwarded to them, and they can do the whole, well actually when they log in, you get the message, It'll, they'll get forwarded the message and then log in at the same time, or at that time. And you have still no idea what's going on. Uh, another newer one that's also very simple, uh, Goldream. It infects legitimate apps, or it's not an, uh, not an infector, it's been inserted into uh, malicious apps. Once again, we haven't seen uh, automated infection because there would be uh, millions of apps, or thousands at least, hundreds of thousands that are all, pretty much every app you see would be infected or infector. We haven't seen that yet. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what all of these do because they're all very similar and they're all, all to some extent do the same thing of sending SMS messages out. Um, but I think this one actually attempts to install additional software, which is a nice thing and it's related to a little bit later when we're talking about a little more complex malware. Um, this is another simple one, Steamy Screen. It was a uh, very popular app where you can actually pretend you're drawing on a steamy shower door or something. I'm not sure why this is so popular. I mean, you can just do that in the morning or something. Um, and so it was... Uh, Similar concept, forwarding your contacts, stealing information from people, and then forwarding it to the attacker. The contact portion makes sense if you're actually trying to find new people to infect. Kind of useful. Uh, oh, yeah, and the bookmarks. Once again, that's the SEO basically to drive you forward to. On Android, it doesn't really make a lot of sense if you have a keyboard phone. It makes more sense on the ones that don't have keyboards, like uh, virtual on-screen keyboards. Virtual on-screen keyboards are interesting because we've got a few more things that are interesting about that. What you can do with an on-screen keyboard and that you don't do with a, a regular keyboard. Uh, this is a calendar app. Uh, I'm not even sure how you pronounce that. Jim Sones? I, I, I have no clue. Uh, <laughs> this is an app that is sort of a calendar app, but it, it doesn't actually do anything until you... It, it always starts in January. So you're in March, April. I think that's when we actually found the thing. So if you try to forward, there's actually code in, if you, code in, in the app. If you try to forward about four or five months, then it triggers the uh, sending of SMS messages and whatnot. It's a little tricky. Not a very effective uh, calendar app, but not very useful either because it, it doesn't, it's not a very good Trojan. I mean, the more, less, the less useful it is, the less like, useful or Trojan it is, less likely to keep using it. Uh, let's look at the more complex ones. Uh, the one of the original ones, Gainimi. This is a slightly more complicated one. It, it once again, infected apps, uh, asked for a ton of permissions. Uh, asking for a ton of permissions is a bad thing. I, th I think uh, Georgia mentioned uh, Whisper Systems uh, software, which I think runs on the Nexus S only, uh, because a lot of other malware uh, phones you can't actually install with their drivers yet. They're working on that, but then not yet. Uh, they basically, they give you g more granular permissions, so you can say, okay, I, I, I want it to be able to access GPS, but not SMS, or I want it to be able to, to get, get the uh, record audio, but not, uh, I don't know, said emails or something, or read my emails, or uh, things like that. With, with uh, standard Android, it's the operating system reading the manifest file in, in your app and saying, okay, these are permissions that are requested by the app or the developer. Grant them all, or no, you don't get to play Angry Birds. You know, that kind of thing. Um, oopsie, come back one. <laughs> Uh, what does it do? Same thing again, an encryption and has a backdoor and it has a bunch of other uh, functions. A very complex kind of app and very interesting, but I forget exactly what the deal was. Okay, how does it make money? That's why I'm here actually. How does this thing make money? Okay, it's, uh, it's, it, it forwards, I think it opens or URLs? Yeah, okay, traffic generation by loading web pages. So if you load a URL, you can load an ad, you can load a uh, page, you load anything under control of the author, meaning even a download uh, URL. Um, yeah, and forwarding SMS and forwarding content. Basically the same things you're doing with the simple apps, but with, with, with encryption and a few other than uh, the possibility to upgrade your app. Um, this is uh, tcent.a. It's named after the, uh, ma the manufacturer publisher of, of the QQ uh, messaging system. And we, it's named like that because it actually goes after some after uh, security software that's provided by the QQ uh, instant messaging service. They're trying to protect the users and at the same time this thing is going after them and deleting them first, getting them off the phone. Okay, you have uh, AV or something? Goodbye. <laughs> Which is a good technique and it's, uh, it's, it does this, it basically doing everything the simple ones were, but taking it at a stage out by going after after security software. So starting the whole cat and mouse game where uh, we detect them, they detect us, and, and we go back and forth. Something along those lines. It, it's a step up. Uh, Cruise Win A, so another very similar one. I forget exactly what this one does. 
Okay, yeah. This one attempts to delete software. I believe it was, uh, we, we suspect it was a port of a Symbian uh, malware because the code to delete uh, software was designed to delete uh, software from the Symbian phone, meaning it has the same directory paths and has the same naming for the for your applications on the device. Something you would never find in an Android phone. Meaning uh, the people who are writing the complex Symbian malware in, in, in China, they said, okay, let me just port that code. I got a, I got a short deadline. My boss is going to kill me or something, literally. <laughs> uh, and so, I mean, they basically take what they have and they put them together. This is similar to one of the first Android uh, Trojans, which is, I think, uh, fakeplayer.a or something, which was essentially the equivalent of a J2ME uh, Java, uh, mobile Java Trojan in Android, because Android is programmed roughly, is written in Java, or at least the code is the source code written in Java and then converted to uh, uh, the Delvic uh, virtual machine. For the most part, it's Java's Java, man. It, it kind of works like that. If you're a programmer, it's about the same all the way through. On the other side, there are differences, but it's not, uh, not that relevant. It just means it's easier to go take one thing and move it away quickly. Uh, Droid Kung Fu, another one of the more complex ones. I, I think this is the one, first one to use the, or one of the first few to use the uh, encrypted root exploits. So like uh, you know, the other ones were using, I think Droid Dream was using the unencrypted uh, root exploits that were used to root your phone. They said, okay, let's add some encryption to hide from, from um, uh, from antivirus software and 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 get get to more base. The funny thing is, while they're while these malware are using root exploits, they're not writing their own exploits. They're just taking whatever existed uh, by legi uh, legitimate uh, routers, I guess, whatever the term is. Uh, people who want to root their phones and and people who are developing these root exploits, they're just taking those and repackaging them because I guess it's cheaper for them to do it that way than to spend the resources to write their own. I don't know what I'd say about that, but um, that's kind of what they're doing. But it does the same thing again, loads URLs, and then they basically do the SEO to make money. And then the concept of the encryption is it also, once again, keeps their opponents off of, off of their, their, their devices. It would be on a PC, it'd be your system. On, 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 on a million devices, it's a million hits your entire botnet of, of phones. Uh, yeah, botnets. <laughs> uh, PJ app. This is another in a bunch of infected apps. Very similar. Very simple concept, but it, uh, I think it has a backdoor in it too. Yes, also it has a back. The complex portion is it includes a backdoor so that you can, the uh, author or the malauthor or the gang that does this can keep updating their software as they need to fight against other 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 Android malware writers who to who are improving their game, upping the game. They're going to match match it or surpass them or take them out. I believe we saw something similar on on Symbian where a few of them were trying to delete other other malware on device. Just a good concept to do, you know. I mean, it's like a core, it's like a core wars. <laughs> you know, okay, viruses fighting each other, right? Uh, this is an interesting one, Top Plank A. Uh, this is some interesting code that actually downloaded code from another place, uh, from, from the attacker server and up uploaded it within itself. So to like load code via a class loading mechanism in, 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 in Android. So you'd say, okay, instead of like, okay, I should mention quickly that uh, John Oberheide did the uh, Twilight uh, app. It was, uh, I think it was Rootstrap, I forget exactly how it is. Uh, Rootstrap was essentially software that he gets you to install on your, on your, on your phone one way or another, code, um, what he calls social engineering, the uses it until on your phone, and then it downloads the, um, the exploit code or whatever new exploit code from a uh, server controlled by, by him, which is a very unique technique. The, uh, the Twilight app, un unlike um, if you did see George's talk, it isn't quite a botnet. What it actually did was, well, like, he got about 200,000 downloads and about uh, 100 complaints from Twilight fans who are like pissed because there were only uh, two pictures. So there's like the preview picture on the Android market and the one in the app. Like, where are the pictures? It came out right before the uh, the new Twilight movie, so it was like perfect timing. The concept being that hey, if you if you can if you need to convince people to download your app and install it on your app themselves, you have basically uh, a downloader installed on your phone that allows you to bring in exploits and bring in code without having to worry about. Uh, permissions and a few other things. That, that was kind of the content. So top link is very similar. It pretends to be another app and you download uh, code from the attacker. Instead of downloading native code like, like uh, Overhide's uh, technique, which is very nice, um, it's downloading uh, uh, basically class files or APK files from I think it was APK files, but the APK is the actual packaging. I think it was actually downloading DEX files. DEX files are the, are the code, the bytecode within the APK file. So it's downloading a DEX file and loading it with the class loader from, from Android and putting it into, into your file and loading new content. Relatively advanced compared to everything else, which was, okay, we'll just download an entirely new installation file. It downloads code and just uh, hot, hot updates, I guess. And, uh, okay, and what does it actually do to make money? What it makes money, not as interesting as what it does to get there, get down your phone. <laughs> it's just doing again the uh, sending of SMS and bookmarks and 
things like that. Not, not, not as impressive, really. It was more how it did it than what it, what it, what it does. Uh, it's, it, it's like this with some of these, since we're just still in a, a relatively new range of Android malware or new attackers. Some of the more interesting parts are what they do and not so much how they make the money. But uh, something like Basebridge. Um, no, yeah, notable once again because it kills security software, which is the next step up. It's where you no longer care about just your, your, your own malware and taking over one device yourself or a thousand devices yourself. You're now worried about the rest of the ecosystem. Is something going to take me out? Makes it a little more complicated, makes it a little more, makes it closer to, I guess, artificial life. The, the virus techniques, basically. Um, once again, sending SMS messages to sign up for services and making money for the authors. Uh, not a really exciting technique to make money, but a very, very uh, reliable way. Um, this is an interesting one, nikispy.a, no notable for uh, recording conversations. Basically, um, you have a, a conversation on your phone, it records it, saves it to a file, sends that, that, that recorded file to, to the attacker. Very nice technique. Um, this is the first uh, malware we saw it done. We've seen spyware do something similar and then a bunch of other platform, platforms doing it. Um, and, and once again, if you can get audio, you can get uh, credit card numbers and social security numbers and so forth. Uh, Golden Eagle.a, very similar. Mm, also records calls and then whatnot, and a friendly attacker. I forget exactly what all of these do. They're, some of them are quite similar. So we got social security numbers, you got credit card numbers, anything you can speak, uh, account names, uh, personal names, and any personally identifiable information. I think this is, I'm thinking this is useful mostly for uh, someone who's going to be sitting on their phone for a long time and not, not a, a hit and run attacker. It's like, okay, we're sitting here because you can't guarantee when someone's going to speak about uh, a name or whatnot. That, that's actually solved by a few other interesting things. The more, uh, something like Soundcomer, which is a proof of concept academic app. Uh, it was in two pieces that use very few permissions, so it's not those laundry list of uh, Apple uh, permissions like, oh, I need everything on a device to access. It, 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 I think it has a hardware control for, for uh, recording, and it has, has, has uh, uh, I think, internet access. I think those are pretty much it. So two pieces. So it, uh, what it does is interesting. Um, the recording portion records the audio when you, when you connect to an IVR. So similar to Warvox, it'll, it'll, uh, they have a fingerprint for, for a number of... Uh, IVRs, like your credit card company or whatnot, and so they know when you're, when, uh, what portion of, of the uh, call where you're in the section says input your number. So it's either they can do it two ways, either by getting the keystrokes when you type it in, in the keypad, or number two, um, getting the audio and then converting the, the uh, DTMF, decoding DTMF and converting to digits, and then, then just sending the digits back to the attacker. A little bit of bandwidth, a little bit of uh, work, but a very interesting concept. Uh, sound card, I mean, that's how they do it. They grab the credit card numbers. That's kind of how they make money. Uh, another one, more recent, uh, touch logger. This is another interesting uh, academic project. Uh, we haven't seen any of these in real malware yet. <laughs> these are quite interesting. Um, so this one, uh, so if you, once again, I was talking about on-screen keyboards. So if you have a physical keyboard, you can just read key stocks, right? On-screen keyboard, you'd have to get like, like read keyboard and act permission. This one doesn't actually need that. All it's doing is reading the, uh, the sensors on your phone, which is like your accelerometer. Not a, not a bad thing. I mean, they even say in the, in the uh, research paper, like, wh 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 what's the next step? Uh, there are now web interfaces for and that allow you to read the sensor. So essentially, it's reading the accelerometer to see, okay, when you, when you hold the phone in your hand and you push the uh, one button or a two button or the nine button, it can tell out, out of all those nine, nine number buttons by the movement of, of the sensors roughly which button they are. So they have a profiling app on the PC that finds those things and then... Uh, spits that out and produces a database that can be used by a second app, which would be a more Trojan. They haven't actually built a Trojan app, but they have done the uh, profiling of a various devices using a specific keyboard. Very unique technique, and it takes over for um, on-screen keyboards. And once again, it would be something for grabbing account numbers and credit card numbers and, and the like. Um, yeah, then I got a few references here, and it's, I think I'll have the slides up a little later on. Uh, do you have any uh, questions? Sorry, yeah. So one of the things that I, I wish I okay. got a chance to ask Rich Cannings or something from Google is right. why in God's name do they not just scan with a mobile antivirus tool what gets submitted to the market? There are, um, I, mean, I think uh, George actually mentioned earlier, Android's a very, very open platform. You know, you know like the original uh, IBM PC and, and so forth. Um, they're trying not to shut it down or lock it down. I, mean, I, mean, I think that's part of it. Uh, another thing is I don't think they're actually looking at it from a security standpoint yet. I mean, they're, they're, they, haven't, they haven't put the infrastructure in place. They've had to hire a couple of new guys there and whatnot, and they're doing some reorganizing, but they're not quite at the point where they're, they're fully integrated with uh, security software in the market or with, uh, with, at that point yet. I think they're working on it. I just don't, don't know exactly what, what it is. They, it wasn't a priority, I believe. Yeah, that, that's what it looks like. Uh, 
Sorry, yeah? Do you think there'd be any problems coming up with an icebox style protocol or device for mobile devices where... Oh, you mean like a freezing and then restoring? Ah, okay, okay, so you're saying uh, like icebox, like on a PC, you have like a standard image or like a safe image, and you're saying, um, yeah, yes, uh, a safe image that you can just restore from, and like, um, that would be nice. I think they're, uh, what is the one from uh, VMware where they have uh, virtual devices or something? That's like a start for that, where you can actually run a virtual instance of, of an OS, and you would, I, I guess, just take the copy of that and basically wipe it out and do whatever you need to do, like a shopping. Um, but that's one stage, but then like once again, since you have so much information on your device, it tends to get irritating. <laughs> it's, just, it's just kind of a hassle. It's just, just a trade-off. I mean, I'm sure there's a, there's, there's a nice medium there, but it, we're not there yet. Yeah, <laughs> this is true. Someone will find a way around anything we come up with. Uh, does anyone have any more questions? Or <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, you're, you're asking about uh, MIMO or QT. Uh, QT, I believe, um, I'm not sure what Nokia is doing with QT at the moment. Uh, did they sign and sell it off or whatnot? I'm not familiar. Uh, MIMO, I, I understand they're, not, they're no longer following up with MIMO. I think Intel's still doing something with MIGO. Not 100% certain. I'm, I'm, it's a little hard to keep track of what everyone's doing with, uh, with Linux and, and Linux-based systems on, I think, uh, we've still got web, okay, we may not have WebOS anymore either from Palm. I think they sold that off also. Uh, there's a lot of movement. I'm not 100% certain. Yeah. Um, are, are there any more questions? Oh, yeah. Your screenshots, is that submission model? Um, some of them might, well, I don't know. If it was my phone, yes. If it was my, uh, my colleagues' phones, no. <laughs> I'm not sure. Some of them are mine, some of them are from them. Yeah. But yeah, another, another good mod, yes, uh, sandwich has got some good mods and uh, respectable stuff. And for security, I mean, there are some reliable ways of finding things, things for, for secure ROMs. Uh, but any more questions? Okay, uh, <laughs> thank you all.